All right, guys, continuing Quantron week here with Overheat, their version of, uh, why can I not remember his name all of a sudden? Afterburner, there we go. <laughs> Real time forgetfulness here on Channel PR. Anyway, so here he is, uh, and you see he's, he's armored up right now, but he's clearly based off of a Tron light cycle, which is really cool. Um, he, he does still have the tri trio wheel design, although they're in the, the two wheels are in the front. But the, ba but the basic design looks like a Tron light cycle, and that's kind of cool. He does have some extra armament on right now in the form of his weapons, but you can uh, you can actually take those off. Um, and then this slot's actually just the gun. It's got a couple of pegs here that peg in back here um, if you want to have the gun on there. But yeah, it's a neat little... Neat take on it. Like I said, if, if they continue doing the Abominus uh, recolors like they did with Ripper, I would love to have seen this guy end up as Blot or Ripper Snapple, Snapper so they could do it in the blue and maybe make a really cool Tron Light Cycle homage. But I think he's actually an analog for, uh, in the official fiction for, um, what's the word I'm looking for? One of the other guys in Abominus. The yellow guy, uh, Ripper Snapper, not Ripper Snapper, a Sinner Twin. But, uh, but yeah, and also speaking of Ripper, real quick, I meant to do this since I'm not actually doing the blind fire review since I already did it at TFCon. There's just a real quick comparison shot of Ripper and uh, blind fire together. I still think like I, I I like the mold. It's a fun mold, and and they're both they're both good figures. But I really do just love still love Ripper more than blind fire now that I've got him because I just love that purple and teal and and kind of bone color on Ripper. But they're both pretty fun. So anyway, just to get that, just I promised to show that off and then I forgot I wasn't doing uh, Blind Fire again. So anyway, here he is. Um, and the wheels turn a little bit here, you can see. Um, but other than that, basically, uh, again, just like all the other figures in vehicle mode, there's not a whole lot really to speak about here. Aside from there's some really cool tech detailing under the clear plastic here, which is really nice. So yeah, transform him into robot mode. You kind of crack him in half like a fortune cookie. Like that. Uh, these just peg into this, this fist here. You bring these down. Go ahead and lift this uh, piston up. And split the front half. Down here like this. And then these panels are on hinges that come down like this. So open these up. Just down. And he, this is the scary part. This is probably the scariest part in all of Quantron. Aside from trying to get... Uh, Sonic drill off of a combined mode when you're taking them apart. Because these panels, you can see the, the, the foot is connected here, and it's connected to this panel right here, and you can see one of the other slots for it around here. And to transform it, you have to lift this up and rotate it around, but there's a, really, there's a spring in here that holds it tight, and because of the thin plastic, it wants to bend a little bit. And it is pretty stiff, but you can see it bending while you do that. I haven't, had, I haven't pushed it to the point where like, I'm afraid it's going to stress or break, but uh, it is a little scary the first couple of times you do it. Uh, but you rotate that down, rotate his foot out. And for, for this position, you want to rotate it down to the bottom of the leg like that. And this cover actually splits in half and folds around and forms the leg like that. And you can do that first. Um, I just like it. I, I like to leave it solid and kind of out to the side just because when you're already pushing on this, I don't like having just this thin hinge of this clear plastic as, as the, the backdrop for this, but it is possible. Plus, when you have it all closed up, the foot gets in the way. So you, it helps to have this kind of out into the side while you, while you flip the foot down. Uh, the, and you can see there's a little silver bit of the foot that tabs in right here. But yeah, loosen the foot up, and then bring this whole, again, this whole assembly lifts up. It gets a little easier the more you do it. Like, I'm not having as much trouble now as I did originally, but uh, it is a scary little bit. And there's, there's the arm mode position right there, but we'll get to that when we get later on in the later on in the week. So flip this around, down like that, and bring this back down to the leg. And it doesn't tab tab on, but there is there is a little divot here to go around that. Like I said, it, it doesn't lock in place, but it lets you know that you've got it in the right position. And there's the legs done. The upper body, I'm going to take these side panels, lift them up a little bit because they kind of peg in. There's a little tab here you can kind of see on the inside that pegs into the side of the body uh, right there. But you lift that up and rotate it up around to what will be his back, kind of up around like that. 
You don't want to go all the way up because you can see if you went all the way up, this is the hinge for the shoulder right here that has to come back. So you don't want to, you don't want to block that. I, I like to like just kind of pull them straight back and then you can position them after you're all done uh, with the top part. Split the wheel apart. And, uh, and of note, once we split this wheel apart, I'll show you. When you put this back together, I don't know why they didn't just make a couple pegs so it could peg together in, in, in a particular con, uh, config, in any particular configuration since it has these teeth. But you'll notice there's two, there's two parts where the plastic goes all the way through. Uh, these two holes right here match up to these two raised pegs right here. You'll notice there's not any raised pegs the rest of the way around. So when you're going to, when you put it back together, you want to make sure that these two, uh, these two empty spaces up here on the top here line up with these two pegs. And as long as you're close, you'll, you'll be able to get it because the, the teeth also only go together a certain way. So as long as you're close, you should peg those together. But if you're having trouble getting the wheels to peg together, uh, double check and make sure that you're getting these pegs lined up with these holes properly because otherwise there'll, there'll be a gap in the wheel. So flip those out. And again, here's where the shoulders bend back here. Then the hands come down uh, from this curve, lift this around. And again, this tab's gonna tab right in here and then rotate the fist all the way around about 180 degrees. Actually, exactly 180 degrees. Actually bring these on, on these hinge, fold these out and fold them back down behind the arms. And again, right here, we're gonna take the, just this just this orange part, flips around to the gray part and then rotates around like that. And then his head flips up into place. And here's where now you can fold these up behind the robot mode. I just sit on his back like that. And again, he's got the waist swivel. You can kind of fold this. It's on a double hinge, so you can just kind of fold that down behind him, and that'll free up the waist swivel there on the figure. And there's overheat in robot mode. That's really all there is to it. His piston's a little loose there. I guess you could fold it up, up a little bit like that too and still retain waist posability. Yeah, and he's pretty cool. Um, he's got the, uh, the ball-jointed head. Up here, the same, again, the same shoulders we've been seeing on all of them. Actually, I have to do all the limb bots? Yeah, all the limb bots have this, that same shoulder joint system with a ball joint and the hinge up there. He does, he, he does have a bicep swivel, a hinge elbows, and a wrist swivel there, the waist swivel, uh, the ball jointed hips, and then the thigh swivel. And the knees have a little limited range of motion due to these shields, but again, because of the way they transform, you can move that shield down out of the way to get more range of motion in the knee there. And then he's got the ball joints on his feet that give him, you know, he can keep his foot flat in a lot of different positions. Weapon-wise, he's got uh, he's got these two cannons, which you can attach up here into the center of his, uh, his wheel post here. If you want to have shoulder-mounted cannons, you can have him hold the cannons like that uh, if you want. Um, he's also got the rifle here. And again, you can you can actually you can leave everything attached all at once. Uh, I, I like to put the missile launchers a little higher up on his shoulder. You can see it's it's off to one side. It's it's offset. So if you plug it in this way, it's going to sit up higher on the shoulder. If you swap this one to the other side, it's going to sit a little lower on his shoulder. And there he is, all armored up and ready to go kick some butt. You can also take all these apart. And if you look at the other end, you'll see kind of a, you know, the hammery pit. You can take this and plug it in to either side of the, the end of the rifle and give them kind of a Goldie Mark hammer. Um, now, now, there is the big gap up here in the top. I wish that was a little bit more solid. And I wish these, I wish they could compress in. I wish there wasn't there enough room for this to compress in so that these could touch each other. But, um... But for just another example, you know, just another weapon he can use, you can give him the giant, giant mallet for be smacking people down. And yeah, that's, uh, like I said, I, I love his alt mode. I, I love that light cycle homage. Um, the figure itself in robot mode, I think, is, they're all pretty great. I think Celeritas is probably the weakest robot mode for me. Um, I don't know if I'd put him second behind Blind Fire for the limb bots. Um, or if I put Sonic Drill there, but they're all pretty good. Um, and, and again, he's orange, I, I, you know, and we all know how I feel about orange. So, but yeah, there is Overheat, and we'll see you tomorrow for Metal Storm.